So, Blender 4.0 ships with a new set of features for rendering, and currently there is a whole rework for the principal BSDF, which is changing how you would shade and render your models in Blender. One of the very prominent things you would notice is the principal BSDF has been reworked and it has a new look. Taking a look at the principal BSDF from Blender 3.6 and 4.0, there is a huge difference. At the same time, a few things have been revamped for material creation, and this includes the sheen, the clear coat, subsurface, specular reflection and transmission, metallic, and the multiple scattering GGX. And if you take a look at how this has been set up, you'd also notice a few rearrangements has been done, with sheen, coat, and every other thing staying above emission, contrary to what we had before. You'd also notice that it is no longer called clear coat, rather it is called coat. We're going to talk about a few of these and how you can start using it. So getting started, if you simply launch Blender 4.0 and you choose to start shading, one of the things I will tell you, which you can definitely find out as you progressively shade, is this, that sheen is now replacing velvet. So the velvet shader is gone and the new shader that replaces that is the sheen shader. And how this one works is relatively easy because the idea for sheen previously was for fuzzy clothes but now this can be used for both dust and arbitrary materials, adding those details within the crevices of your model or within certain normals of the model. So if you're using the BSDF by default and you connect it, what you'll be getting is a color and roughness. The roughness simply deals with the overall coverage while the color shows up tint that you would be getting throughout the model. And this is for the Sheen BSDF. But then if you choose to use the principal BSDF, what you'll be getting is slightly different. So for this principal BSDF, what we're going to do is set the color all the way to black so that we can explore it. Let's hide every other thing that we're not using and focus on this model. So with this here, if you expose the sheen, you would notice we have weight, roughness and tint. So the tint simply tells you what color you are going to be tinting or what color the sheen is going to be having. So if we set this to say a color like blue, for example, and we choose to increase the weight, we will start seeing that sheen property come to life. The weight in this respect will be seen as the opacity level. So you can use the weight to increase the visibility or reduce the visibility. So if you set up your weight to be something like this, this is what you'll be getting. If you increase it to a higher number, you'd also get higher results. So the more you increase the weight, the more visible this will become. Meanwhile, the roughness on the other hand acts more like the coverage. So even if you have this all the way to this point, the less roughness you have, the less coverage you'll be having. The more roughness you have, the more coverage you'll be having. So you can have this all the way to zero and you literally have no coverage. And the more you increase this, the more coverage you're having. And this is what we have at 0 0.140. And this is what we have at 0 0.449. And this is what we have at 0 0.715. And finally, this is what we're getting once we set roughness to one. So in this case, you can see with the sheen, you can literally texture a model just by simply using the weight roughness and the tint color of the sheen. Furthermore, if you're also using a base color, say for example, you're going for a base color of red and you like to tint this with a different color, say maybe a different color of mustard probably, you can still control the weight and get some more fantastic looking colors out of this. So we can drag this down and we can increase the weight and you can see that. So this now offers a more interesting way of shading several parameters. So if you're going for that velvet feel, of course you'll get it. If you're also thinking about just using the sheen to texture your entire model, you can also proceed to do that. And this looks really cool. Moving on, let's talk about coat because directly above sheen, you have coat. This used to be called clear coat. So if we simply take a look at 3.6 and also what we have with 4.0, you would notice we have clear coat and clear coat roughness. Of course, there's an IOR, which is index of refraction, but right now this has been done in a more interesting way. So for subsurface, there is a few things going on. So the very first thing which you would notice for subsurface is the base color is now the primary color that subsurface uses. Contrary to Blender 3.6, where we have a base color, the subsurface color, the subsurface IOR, the subsurface anitrosopy, the radius, and of course, another subsurface, what we have here is simple. So if you like to increase the weight of your subsurface, you can simply just increase it. So like we mentioned earlier, this is how much value or the opacity of the parameter you're cranking in. So you can increase that 
And by default, you can now tell that we're having that subsurface view. And what contributes to this entire look and feel is the radius. So if you click here, you would notice that we have the RGB values which exists here. So depending on what value you want, you can crank that in. Looking further, you will see we have scale. So 0.05 scale is how much light hits and travels into the skin and spreads or simply scatters. So if you would want light to travel in a bit deeper before it scatters, you can increase that. So whatever you have here is being multiplied by whatever you have going on here. And it is worth mentioning that the more you increase this, the more these values travel inwards. So if I set this to 1.3, for example, you would notice that the red value travels more inwards and we're having these other values travel based off their given properties. That is also something to keep in mind. And this is where unit of skill comes in, that if you're trying to create anything, always make sure you have an idea of what the unit of skill is so that you can deal with some of these parameters properly. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this to 0.05 and you can see what we have going on. At the same time, you can switch to any of these parameters. If you do have skin textures or subsurface colors which you want to use, you can plug them within the base color and that is all you need to get your subsurface going. The subsurface also has three different methods which you can select at any point in time and you can play with the anisotropy and all these other values to get the best out of it. So this is it. For those who are thinking about working with the subsurface, the coat or the sheen which has been reworked and now has a new model based off an implementation of the practical multiple scattering sheen using linearly transformed cosines, then you can definitely grab Blender 4.0 and start working with it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this. You can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.